Hi. Uh, last time we talked, we talked about um, the laws of user experience in the first three about focusing on your users and um, how users, even though you focus on them, you can't necessarily take their feedback literally and they don't know how to build requirements and also your IT department probably doesn't understand your customers well enough to build requirements either. Um, we, we, today we're going to talk a little bit about design and how you should value good design. Um, you know, the, the, the law, when we talk about this law, we talk a little bit about, you know, why do users upgrade their operating system? And outside of the fact that the, uh, the, their laptop comes with the new OS or they had to because their company made them, most people upgrade their operating system because it looks newer. And if it looks newer, it must be better. So consumers will trust data in a newer looking operating system. They won't, they'll be less likely to trust data in something that looked like it was built 10 years ago. But when we talk about design, we're not talking about design with a little, with a lowercase d, more of an uppercase d. Steve Jobs talks about, you know, design isn't just how it looks, but it's how it works. And um, I think his products reflect that. Uh, you know, if you look outside of Apple, other good examples of, of companies that value good design, we did a project for Adobe, it was called Adobe Watson Express. And we didn't focus on the graphic design, we focused on the design of how it was going to work and focused on the user flows of the application. And the design was important, but the design of how it works wound up being the big win for Adobe. It's not a very sexy application, it was a bug tracking tool. Um, but the win behind the firewall for them was extremely big. Um, it basically had an ROI of something in the neighborhood of you know, $700,000 a month based on increased employee efficiency and, and reduced bugs. Um, and then when we talk about, you know, design, the tendency then is to flip to design, let's design for everybody, which brings me to the, the fifth law. And designing for everybody is, is also a mistake. Um, that you tend to design, when you tend to design for everybody, you get something like SAP or PeopleSoft, you know, hundreds of tabs, thousands of features that are supposed to accommodate every user need. Most people that look at those, those systems find them extremely hard to use. Um, even though they design for everybody, and thinking that everybody would be able to use it, most people find them very inefficient. The flip to that, you know, what, 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 what the, um, designers typically look at is, well, we just need more features. Um, one of our customers, Firth Jones, um, asked us to build a yearbook tool, a yearbook editing tool, and, and our first instinct, their first instinct, was to look at their chief competitor and say, if they have 100 features, we need 110 to make it 10% better. When in reality, we needed to look at what their customers needed, not what features they needed, and what their customer workflows were, and design for um, those targeted users. Um, an, another company that does a really good job at this is Amazon.com. Amazon actually, if you look at their one-click shopping um, innovation, they spent, you know, most retailers when you go and, and try to buy online, you click buy and they ask you, are you sure you want to buy? Are you super sure you want to buy? And then you can buy it. Well, Amazon just said buy it. And the reason why retailers do that, right, is because they want to make sure before they submit the, the, the order that you're sure you want to buy because they don't want you to have to go back and undo the purchase. Well, Amazon said, well, 95% of our users, are when they click the buy button, they actually mean they want to buy it. So instead of, re, instead of accommodating for the 5% of users that made a mistake, let's, let's accommodate for the 95% that actually mean it and then make the undo process also really easy for users. So we've covered another two laws of user experience and we'll cover the last three in a little bit.